Welcome to the video guys. Today, just come down with the family and the kids and that, just to have a little walk down the promenade, uh, down at Bastion. Gonna maybe chuck some lures about, it's a bit, bit rough, but um, there's lots of froth and like very oxygenated water really close in, which is awesome. Uh, not really bass season yet, but someone's got to be first, so I'll definitely give it a go. This is actually fairly calm for the reef, guys. Because there's a big drop off, quite far out, it can get real, real sketchy down here really quick. You get these massive waves, and you can see from these stones exactly where the water's come over and just push the stones just to the edge and then stop. But there you go, look. That's like a little mini micro one compared to what you get down here. This will get a nice one on video. I'm gonna try not to get absolutely soaked today, guys. So that's why you've got to be careful guys because um, if you're not you get absolutely soaked which I just did. It's on camera as well so I'll slow mow it, it'll look well funny. The set of my lure rod guys, it's probably not worth not worth using it today but um, it's always nice to try and, and the other thing as well is it, it just proves to you that if you put in the effort and you try hard enough in all conditions you'll get a good payoff. When I do my lure fishing, I use a Sonics Denominator X spin, eight foot four piece, and it's 10 to 30 gram. Most of the lures I use are about 20 gram. So this is the, um, the ideal. I've got another one at home that's sort of three to 14 grams. And that's also a good bit of kit, but especially in the rough stuff like this, Isla. You need something with a little bit more punch. And that's... 10 to 30 gram is kind of... the smallest I would use for conditions like this. Using a little Darwin Ninja. 2500A loaded with, I think this is about 25, 30 pound braid. Uh, it's what it came with, I haven't, I haven't put anything else on it. I, it seems to be all right. So if I get a snap off, I'll change it over to nano fill, which is what I normally always use. That's pretty decent stuff, that. It's gonna make that nice and loose so I can pull that braid for easily. If you've got really fat fingers, I wouldn't really recommend using braid, um, or I'd at least recommend using braid with a uh, like a, a mono a mono rubbing leader or something, just so you can grip it with your fingers. I normally have a lure clip on, but in my last video it snapped off, and I was kind of rushing around to get out the door, so I didn't I didn't pick them up. Brandon. So I'm just going to be tying these straight on. Straight onto the um, on the on the lure directly onto the line. Miley, you should probably shoot side down that it's got a big hole in it. This is my lure box, guys. It consists of lots of fish, black minnows, uh, storm 360 shads, some Dexter wedges. Some sidewinder, scary eels, weedless ones, some normal sidewinders. Um, I've got quite a few different bits and bobs in there. The ones I'd like to use and stuff like this are like, this is a little Rapala skitter pop. I've got a lot of bass on the, the mackerel coloured one. It's done me really well. Uh, the trebles are getting a bit rusty. So what the one I'm going to use today, guys, will be the, the redhead. 
Uh, it's another one I like. And then obviously on the other side as well, I've got lots of other bits and bobs. Uh, a few worms, a few older sidewinders. I've got a um, fish black minnow here that a cuttlefish took a big chunk out of. I'm sure you can see that on the video, guys. Give you a little bit of a better look at it. That's what it looks like when a cuttlefish grabs it. When I was reading that in, it just went super heavy uh, and then just came off. Almost no room to move, can't feel the braid, it's so thin. But once you get it, get that in there. There we go, guys, now just pull that tight. And that's like our little safety knot. Stop that line from slipping out of the blood knot that we've just used. Then we're just going to take that extra little bit. Just trim that down. Normally you have a knife and I'd use that. Any old line, guys, and that don't just drop it on the floor, it's stupid. The dog might pick it up. Birds and that will take it. Stick it in your pocket and just forget about it. I'll have a couple of chucks for this, guys, and we'll see what happens. I'm not hopeful, but anything can happen. Because it's a pretend fishy. So what happens? If you bounce this across the top of the water and a bass is swimming underneath it and hears it and sees it and thinks it's an injured fish and then he eats it. Yeah, and then and then these hooks, they get stuck in the lip of the bass, like this, and then I can reel him in and then we can take him home and eat him for dinner. Yes. Do you like that idea? Yeah. yeah. Is that cool? Yay! Maybe not today, because it's a bit early for the bass, but like, it's always worth trying, isn't it? You never know until you try, right, pig? Do you want to have a go? Yeah. Do you want to cast it? Yeah. Come over here, then. Yeah. Look, when I let go, I'm going to throw it forwards like that, right? But you see the lure's still there, hasn't, hasn't thrown out. That's because I'm still holding the line. What happens is when you throw it, watch my finger. I let go quick. There you go. Push that shut. That's it. Now you hold it here, put your arm up like this, and then you reel. And then you need to, every now and then, stop. Every now and then you need to stop and twitch the rod. That's it. Now stop, twitch the rod. Go again, stop, twitch the rod. Let go as the rod just starts going forwards. So one, two, three, let go. See? Like a missile. And what I do on 
ledges is I stand on the wall and I point the rod down and I bounce them down like this. And that's going to stop the, the lure from jumping out of the water. It's going to keep it flat on the surface. Get the drone up now, guys. Yeah. This is the um. Yeah. 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 This is a DJI Mavic Fly More combo, uh, yeah. and I bought it for kids. Yeah. Why don't you come and sit here, and then you can talk to the camera too. Okay. <laughs> what the hell? Why did you stand on the scooter? There's a little remote, you've got to put your phone into that. Get this unfolded. There she is. Put a fresh battery in because I know this one's dead. Yeah, this battery died pretty good. I don't know why it died. It just flew out with that, that's it. The camera's looking around. It's scared. The camera's scared. What the hell did you do to it? It's scared. Yeah, well, why is the camera scared? What is she looking at? Phone just connects up in here. It's a bit difficult with a bigger phone, so check. Uh, I'd say check your phone fits before you buy one. Um, I had to swap phones because I thought I had the software on that phone, but I don't. So uh, it says ready to fly when it's ready to fly. And then all you do is you hold these two down, turn them to the left, starts getting ready, and then it will take off. Pass us by where you'll just sit there to wonder why.